Before I get started, I just want to point out there's a film crew right there. You probably you'll probably notice them jumping around as they because uh, we're we're doing an interview. Today's video is personal. I, I hate doing personal videos. You guys know I say this all the time, but this is about the Southern Poverty Law Center issuing an apology to me because they falsely accused me of having attended a conference in Iran in 2012. That's crazy. I've never done this. And they also called me alt-right, which by their own definition is about white identity and a fear of multiculturalism. In this video, I want to show you their apology. I've got some questions for you. And I also want to show you how the author of the article actually responded. I find myself in a very strange situation when a news outlet refers to me as alt-right because it's basically the opposite of what I am. My work throughout the past has highlighted institutional racism, the plight of refugee families, and I tend to think that I either drift from a moderate perspective to actually a left-wing perspective, even on this YouTube channel. I got 30% thumbs down for being, to a certain degree, critical of Brittany Pettibone, Lauren Southern, and Martin Selner when they got detained. I don't think I was wrong, and I think some people didn't like that my opinion wasn't in alignment with theirs, and that's okay. Now, before I get into everything else, let me give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, all of you. If you haven't already, go to patreon.com forward slash Timcast and become a patron today. There are many different tiers to choose from, most notably is tier one. At $10 per month, you get access to behind the scenes photos and videos and commentary videos when available, usually when I'm traveling and reporting on the ground. When you sign up on Patreon, you help me do the work that I do, so please consider becoming a patron at any level you feel comfortable with today. First, let's look at what the actual story was. And I did a video about this a few days ago, but I, I just want to give a quick update for everybody who, who might not be aware. The multipolar spin, how fascists operationalize left-wing resentment. This article is very complicated. I find it to be very confusing and overly verbose. He uses a lot of language that's very difficult for the average person to understand. But I'm not going to get into the absolute specifics about how he's trying to claim that fascists are operationalizing left-wing resentment. I want to jump straight to the point he made about me and why it was incorrect. In one paragraph, he says, Hands off Syria Coalition Steering Committee member Isa Chair joined Maisan on a panel at the second New Horizons conference in Iran in 2012. Conference speakers that year included World Workers Party member Caleb Maupin, alt-right journalist Tim Poole, Holocaust denier Kevin Barrett, and Duganists like Voltaire Network associate Matisse Piskorsky. As I stated in my other video, I've never been to Iran, there was never any instance in which I was talking to anybody about attending this kind of conference in Iran to be a speaker or anything like that. It is absolutely ridiculous to insinuate that this is fact, that this is factually accurate in any way. This link here is an archived version of a website for an Iranian conference, which yes, does include my name. On the website, it says panelists Vahid Jalili, Khaled Kudomi, Medea Benjamin, Randy Short, Tim Pool, Caleb Maupin, moderator Ken O'Keefe. This might be a different Tim Pool. I don't know why my, my name is on it. You can see the subject matter is the Gaza War and BDS Movement Strategy Against the Zionist Regime. I have never covered anything having to do with this. I have zero expertise in any of these things. And I gotta admit, I take great offense to the idea that I would participate in a panel with Holocaust deniers. Although I don't get into my politics very often, I, I do get offended at some things, believe it or not. At or around this time, as you can see on Twitter, I was in Spain covering congressional protests in Madrid. Here from September 29th, 2012. With even some tweets, I just broadcasted 29S. There is even a news article about me from Madrid on the 30th of September 2012 about me coming to Spain to cover these protests, calling me periodista independiente, independent journalist. The idea that someone would believe I was in Iran speaking at a conference when you can simply Google search my name, look on Twitter, and see that it's verifiably false, to me is absolutely insane. Further, adding alt-right journalist is crazy. Now, I know that all of you who know who I am and who watch my channel know that I'm anything but alt-right, and I am probably the opposite of alt-right, and you can watch my documentaries on institutional, institutional racism, you can see my statements about Europe and refugees and migrants, and see that I'm probably center left, and in many instances, kind of far left. But I don't believe in authoritarianism. I digress. The SPLC has issued an apology because of this article. Explanation and apology. The multipolar spin. 
how fascists operationalized left-wing resentment, and here is what the SPLC had to say. On March 9th, 2018, we posted an article on our Hate Watch blog entitled The Multipolar Spin, How Fascists Operationalized operationalize left-wing resentment. You can tell I'm kind of getting tired of, of saying that absurdly verbose title. Shortly after its publication, we received complaints registered by or on behalf of several journalists mentioned in the article that it falsely described one or another of them as white supremacists, fascists, and or anti-Semites, and falsely accused them of engaging in a conspiracy with the Putin regime to promote such views. Because neither we nor the article's author intended to make any such accusations, we took it down while we re-examined its contents. Here's what I want you to keep in mind. Because neither we nor the article's author intended to make any such accusations. Do not forget this. We will come back to it. That re-examination has caused us to conclude that while the intent of the article, which we thought was clear at the time of publication, was to show only that individuals on the left share some policy views with respect to multipolarism that are held by the far right and or appear on far right media and conferences advocating them, the article did not make that point as clearly as it could or should have. Accordingly, we have decided not to repost it. In addition, we extend a sincere apology to those who believe they have been falsely described in it, including Max Blumenthal, Ben Norton, Tim Poole, Rania Kalik, and Brian Becker, and disclaim, as clearly as we can, any intention to suggest that any of them are white supremacists, fascists, and or anti-Semites, that they hold such views, or that they are engaged in a conspiracy with the Russian government to promote such views or otherwise. They refer to me as an individual on the left. Thank you. I appreciate that the Southern Poverty Law Center has on their website an article which correctly states I am an individual on the left. I appreciate that. Further, though there are some qualifiers they use, like people who believe, this is, in my opinion, appropriate, and I respect the SPLC for issuing this apology. Because when you are arguing whether or not someone holds certain views, you need only argue that it is likely to be true, that you have a reason to believe it, that you harbor no doubts as to its truthfulness, meaning there's, there's an actual argument to be made, right? In this instance, there was no argument for them to be made as to whether or not I or any of the other people involved were white supremacists or anti-Semites or held those views in any way. There is nothing that the SPLC has that could argue in that direction. So they took it down. They apologized for making the accusation. But let's go back to the part where I said, because neither we nor the article's author intended to make any such accusations. And look at what the author actually intended to say. Alexander Reed Ross, the person who wrote the article, tweeted almost immediately after its publication, while I'm disappointed that my article was taken down, I respect the SPLC's decision. The article was taken down because of legal threats based on misinterpretations of the claims in the article, not due to factual inaccuracies. I stand by the facts as they're presented in the piece. My article was vetted by six independent scholars, journalists, and researchers prior to publication, and drew accolades from a number of human rights activists and media professionals. I will say there is one small incidental error in the piece that wasn't malicious at all. The SPLC is correct that I never called Max, Ben, or Rania a fascist or an anti-Semite, nor did I insinuate that they're involved in some obscure conspiracy. In fact, the subtitle of my piece, How Fascists Operationalize Left-Wing Resentment, suggests exactly the opposite. It's a pretty sorry state of affairs when a well-connected journalist threatens legal retaliation against a civil rights media outlet in order to suppress factual information they find inconvenient. However, it does reinforce my reason for writing the piece in the first place. Last but not least, this last peak has been a riot, but thanks to my friends, family, and fellow geography teachers for helping me through. Despite the strain centering my life around my son, my wonderful girlfriend, and my friends has renewed my hope, love, and stability. He has essentially refuted the apology. He has stated that it was not factually inaccurate. Let me just say that as far as I can tell, he used an archived version of a conference that took place in Iran supporting Holocaust deniers and believed that was factually accurate. I don't know very many independent scholars, journalists, and academics who would find an archive of a conspiracy-supporting anti-Semitic conference website as credible in any way. And I know that's not the core, that's not the crux of what his article was about, but the idea that he would say it was all factually accurate lends itself to exactly why this article was taken down by the Southern Poverty Law Center in the first place. They said in their apology, it was not the intent of the author to make such a distinction. But the author says it was factually accurate. 
and whether or not he claims he did not call Rania Ben or Max Blumenthal fascists, he did call me definitively alt-right. If that was not his intention, he shouldn't have definitively stated that I was. And so I think that's why the Southern Poverty Law Center had to issue an apology. It's not a perfect apology. There, like I mentioned, there's some qualifiers in it that I, I think the language isn't strong enough, but I think they did exactly what they could have done to f protect themselves for, from further litigation. They are protecting themselves, but they did apologize and remove the article. Many people don't get to say that an article was retracted and an apology was granted. There are many people who have been defamed by news outlets, by other nonprofit organizations, who are still fighting years later. The fact that this apology was granted only a few days afterwards, in my opinion, is a good thing. And I have to say, although it's not perfect, I do respect the Southern Poverty Law Center for admitting they were wrong to make such implications, to imply in any such way that any of us held these views. But let me know what you think in the comments below, because certainly this has opened up a huge debate. Many people are actually posting on my Facebook, they're angry about all this, because me getting an apology is not fair. Certainly many people have been maligned or slandered, or as they believe slandered, by the Southern Poverty Law Center who have not received apologies. So they, they, there are certainly people who want to see this debate go on further, and I guess here's the opportunity. Let me know what you think. I'll include the link to the apology in the description below, and send me your thoughts. I'd love to hear your opinions. You can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. Stay tuned. New videos every day at 4 p.m. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the film crew that's sitting behind me as they've bounced around. It's all in good fun. They're working on a project for a documentary about culture wars and other online issues. So maybe you'll hear about that when it comes out. And uh, I'll see you all tomorrow.